we're on the hunt for some of the rarest and most coveted beers made in the world. In the last 10 years, American craft breweries have come to dominate the world rankings in beer. And the best of the best of these are made in small batches all across the country. The huge demand and limited supply for these rare brews means you're not going to find them on the shelf at your local store. Our goal of this show is to bring you along to the local brewery events and show you that the hunt for these beers is just as memorable and fun as drinking the beer in the end. Limited release. So Rob, what's on tap for today? Well, we're going to hit a new brewery to the two of us. We're going to go to Orange County, California to The Brewery for Black Tuesday. Uh, I, I, you know, I do have a little bit of experience with these guys since they do distribute a lot on the West Coast. Uh, they're very well known for their Belgian-style ales. Oh, well, if you know so much about The Brewery, why don't you give us a little history? The Brewery was founded in 2008 by Patrick and Rachel Rue, who decided after law school that life would be more fun brewing cases rather than arguing them. That first year, they turned out around 600 barrels of beer, but production has ramped quickly, and they currently produce around 3,000 barrels of beer from their 15-barrel brew house. They have become very well-known for brewing Belgian-style beers, experimenting with spices and wild yeast to create very unique flavor profiles. Barrel aging is also very important to them, as can be seen from their massive barrel warehouse, with some of their beers aged for three years to help develop the complex flavors they seek. So when it comes to styles, these guys couldn't have picked a better way to find something to be experimental with. Now the thing about Belgian beers is uh, they were developed back before hops was really popular as the main flavoring, and so they look into a lot of other ways to flavor their beers. Yeah, uh, unlike German beers or really most beers in the world, which to some degree are still influenced by Rheinheinsgebot, Belgian beers can have some really funky flavors to them and can be very sour and very delicious. And the guys at the brewery have done a really cool job of pushing the envelope of this category and finding some really neat flavors to put in there. Yeah, and, and although they're very well known for their, uh, their Belgian-style beers, it's their Russian Imperial Stout Black Tuesday that we're here to look at and you know, follow the event around this year. One of the hottest trends in craft brewing right now is barrel conditioning. Since the brewery is one of the leading barrel aging breweries in the country, we thought this would be a good time to give our viewers a quick primer on what barrel aging means. Although barrel aging has been around for centuries, Goose Island is generally credited with popularizing the technique in their acclaimed Bourbon County line of beers, which has been produced since 1994. Barrel aging generally works best with stronger ales like Imperial Stouts, Barley Wines, or Belgian Ales, as these styles age well and have a strong enough flavor not to be overpowered by the wood. In addition, these beers' higher alcohol content helps draw out the wood's favorable flavors. While perusing your beer store, you'll come across terms like oak-aged, barrel-aged, bourbon barrel-aged, cask-conditioned, etc. Some of these terms can be used interchangeably, though each does have certain implications. So let's talk a, bit, a little bit about the beer we're after today, Black Tuesday. So, Black Tuesday was first made back in 2009 by the people at the brewery, and at 18 up to 21% ABV, it is certainly the strongest, heaviest alcohol beer I've ever tasted. Yeah, I, I'm uh, amazed that they uh, have a yeast strain that's able to sort of survive those levels of alcohol. You know, to be honest with you, I'm more surprised they have drinkers who are able to survive <laughs> that level of alcohol. Yeah, so one Black Tuesday is about 10, 12 Bud Lights. <laughs> well, and so the thing is, with that level of ABV, they can really push in some very cool flavors and they age the stuff over a year in bourbon barrels and with all that work it gets some really cool layers of flavor into it. So with that much work that's done in the size of their brewery there can't be like that much of this beer that's out there. No and you know some of these other events we've gone to have been like 20,000 bottle events and even those you know people are rushing to get bottles. This thing here we're looking at maybe 3,000 bottles of beer. Why not only you know is it a limited, very limited release, but to actually get it, you need to join the Reserve Society a year in advance to get to a two-bottle allocation. And if you'd actually like to go to the event party, the event release, you need to then sign on a month before the party and get one of about 300 tickets that's uh, made available uh, so that you can go and you can enjoy it on draft at the brewery. Yeah. Now, if you're not a Reserve Society member, all is not lost. They do sell some bottles to the general public. That having been said, they'll go on sale at like 10 o'clock on Black Tuesday, and they'll sell out by 10.05. So if you want to get some, you better be ready. Since neither of us live in Orange County, we met up at LAX with all of our gear. Being that Black Tuesday is only three days after Darkness Day, it was quite the logistical challenge to get them both in. First, we went to the provision store to see what they had to offer, and wouldn't you know it, beer was on the menu. 
We had a couple of sampler sets and watched as they rolled in the Black Tuesday kegs to the store for the release party later that night. Next, we went to their barrel warehouse to film some of this episode. It's amazing the number of barrels of beer that they have conditioning at any given time. And finally, it was off to the brewery to set up for the event. All right, so here we are. We're at the brewery. It's about uh, what time is it? About four thirty. We got about uh, about 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, minutes until the party starts. I got to say, it looks awesome in here. Yeah, they've really done it up great. There's uh, you know, lots of uh, <laughs> flapper girls walking around and people dressed up in fancy suits and thirties gangster guys. So they just opened the doors. People have started coming in. We've got a pretty good crowd going already, and the tables are mostly filling up. And the Black Tuesday has started to flow. first drinks I went for the coffee vanilla uh, variant of Black Tuesday which has just an incredible nose I mean it smells like a glass of coffee and as you can see there's absolutely no carbonation in here <laughs> I got a bananas foster and it's delicious <laughs> it is delicious mm. oh, and also uh, we're both pretty happy we got the very first untapped check-ins for these variants so we yeah. win we win <laughs> I don't think there's a badge for this, but uh, there should be. There should be a badge for be. being the coolest guys ever. So what do you think of the, the release party that they have here? Uh, it's fantastic. I mean, all the different uh, variants and stuff. So I've had the Randall and the two, uh, the two Perkins and the Bananas Foster is that's pretty incredible. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just... There's just no other word that comes to mind. Yeah, I, I started off with the coffee, and it was just like I, I just went. No. That's what I'm drinking down. It's like, oh, it's, it's just a cup of coffee. That is with coffee. 19 percent alcohol. <laughs> it's it's alcoholinated coffee. Absolutely. That's awesome. So we're about done with the first session, and then I think we have about an hour off, and then the second group of people comes in. We tasted all the beers. Yeah. Uh, and your favorite? Uh, I'm probably gonna go with either the Grey Monday or the Bananas Foster. Uh, for me, I'd say Chocolate Rain followed up by the Grey Monday because it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, they're, <laughs> they've all been very, very good. Don't get me wrong. Yes. The uh, second session has started, and uh, this crowd is much taller than the uh, first crowd, which is odd, and they're uh, much more of a, uh, a hipster. Hipster. Hipsters. Here they come. And how do you like the party? It, uh, it's great, as always. A lot of people, but the lines move fast, and everything's good. And of the uh, offerings tonight, what's your favorite? I, I always end up going back to uh, the chocolate rain. Seems to be a lot of people like the chocolate rain. Salud. Well, it's after 10 o'clock. Uh, the event is down. technically over, although I'd still say two-thirds of the people are here. Yep. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. What do you think? It has been a fantastic party. Um, it's certainly a lot different than going to Dark Order Darkness because it's I'm a very warm, first of all. Well, you're warm. Uh, it's a very restricted audience that gets mm -hmm. to come in, and so there are no lines. There's no running out of anything. There's just as much as you want as far as your tickets go, which is about as much as you could want. Yeah. Uh, a whole bunch of really cool varietals up their rear. Yeah, I, I got to say, it, it, it's... It's very interesting to see how they can take sort of one base beer yeah. and really sort of go way, you know, just many different directions with it. And it just provides a unique flavor profile to all the different variants that they ran through. So how we do this year? So what's uh, unique and different about this event is it's all about tasting beers on site on tap. So we didn't actually bring bottles of small beer home from the event itself. Yeah, we didn't actually get to pick up the two bottles we ordered online until the next day, but thankfully we were around long enough to bring them back with us. Really, the event is all about tasting the variants of Black Tuesday at the party and having a good time. And we did eventually get our two bottles of Black Tuesday, and we loaded up on other bottles from the breweries provision store from other things they make. Yeah, my favorite so far has been the Stein's Throw, which is a collaboration they did with Taps, where they actually threw 900-degree granite rocks into the wort during brewing, which really caramelized the sugars and gave it this great sweet flavor. Absolutely. I'm super excited to taste that bottle of Turtle Elf for goodness. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I know next time I need to bring a bigger bag so I can carry more beers back with me. I know the base style is an imperial stout. So it's going to be strong and dark, uh, hopefully full of complexity. It's very difficult to get to this 
level of alcohol in a beer. Your uh, yeast is going to, you know, get to a certain level where it can't tolerate the alcohol in that that uh, beer anymore and will drop out. They had to do some finagling to get this uh, beer where they wanted it. There are also different yeasts. There are, you know, distiller's yeasts, things like that, that, that may have a higher alcohol tolerance, but often don't leave the beer tasting quite as good as, as we want. For a, a newbie to, to beer, first off, this beer is going to be a little extreme um, and, and may not be one to start people on. I would describe this as you know, a very strong, uh, a very complex beer uh, with a lot of different flavors. And I would encourage anybody to just keep trying it. Uh, look for something different each time and, and focus in on that. You know, you're never wrong when you're tasting a beer. Uh, the brewery is really known for Belgian style ales. Where did the idea for a Russian stout come from? I've always loved Russian imperial stouts, especially the barrel aged variety. So much flavor, so much intensity. So I knew I wanted to release one of those. For Black Tuesday, we initially had a lot of grain left over that I was testing with, so I had a lot of organic grain, a lot of caramel malts that I knew I'd never used, and uh, needed a kitchen sink beer. We uh, did some pilot batches to refine it down to perhaps only six or seven different specialty malts down from, I think, the 20 or 23 specialty malts that were included in, in Black Tuesday. Where did your fascination with barrel aging come from? I'm a, I'm a wine lover. I love wine. I love the effect that barrels have on a wine and uh, I love barrel-aged beer. I, I see a crossover between beer and wine when it comes to beers that are higher in alcohol have a, a really unmistakable complexity and also um, take a lot of time to make, a lot of time and care to make. So I love being able to brew all these barrel-aged beers and kind of baby them, make them, uh, make them something different than they were when they came out of the fermenter. A really great thing for uh, small producers when you're making you know, anywhere from 10 to 50 barrels of a certain certain beer, you can't send it through your distribution network and expect all the accounts to be happy. So it works out really well in that we can produce a lot of very different odd beers. This year we'll produce about 90 different beers. Last year about 60 different beers. And a big chunk of those go through uh, through direct sales to our to our clubs. During one beer for the rest of my days. life? Is that, is that one of the Desert Island questions? How, how about it's the last beer of your life? <laughs> And you have to pick one brewery beer of all time. What's, what are you going down with? <laughs> Probably Melange 3. It's a very big beer. Uh, very big beer. Very intense. Not a beer I want to drink every day. But if, it's a, if that's my last beer, I think it's there's so many different flavors going on that it captures everything that I, I really love in beer. So another successful beer adventure. What do you think of the event? You know, I love the fact that I didn't have to wait in a single line for any beer at this party. Well, I don't know, man. I had to wait in line two minutes once for the Black Tuesday or a variant thereof. Yeah, real rough. <laughs> I do think probably the coolest thing about this particular event is it's not about allocating people their bottles of beer, but letting people come and have a fun party and taste all the different variants of Black Tuesday right next to each other. Yeah, I, I think the best part was not freezing my ass off, but uh, Seriously, I mean, the staff was uh, having a great time with it. The customers had a lot of fun, and the beer was just awesome. You know what was cool, I thought, was the photo booth they had set up, so that all the patrons could kind of bring home a fun souvenir of the party night, aside from the blood alcohol content. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was one thing. Like, having six samplers of Black Tuesday in a two-hour period seemed a little tight. Yeah, and I was talking to the other people there and sort of saying the same thing. Even at only three or four ounces of pork, that many drinks in two hours of Black Tuesday gets to be a little rough. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to work on our shotgunning skills for next year. Until then, keep on drinking. You must be a member of the Reserve Society to buy tickets to the Black Tuesday release party. Black Tuesday bottles go on sale online to the public the day of the release party. They sold out in 10 minutes this year, so set a reminder. They have just started shipping to addresses in California. If you live somewhere else, you need to pick up orders at the brewery. There are variants of Black Tuesday at the release party. Try them all as each one is unique. At about 20% ABV, this beer is a sipper. Make sure you have a sober driver. Don't go on an empty stomach, but there is a food truck on site if you need it. Make sure to pick up some of their other rare beers at the brewery while you are there.